you know, I was a chef and I was a butcher and, you know, that, that was as high as I thought I'd ever be. Mm. I stopped drinking in 2000, I opened a business in 2001. Yeah, yeah. I sold the last business for 60 odd million. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode four of Behind the Curtain in association with WeWork. So, what is Behind the Curtain? Most of you know that it is a secret chat show where nobody knows, literally, who's behind this curtain until we open it and bring them up on stage. This is the fourth one that we've done, or yep. doing, I should say. We've done three, but this is the first one that we have actually done in Dublin. So, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, guys. And if you've seen episode one, two, and three, you'll know this show is nothing without a fantastic studio audience. So thank you again for coming out. Big round of applause, guys. Thank you. Also, we could not do this without sponsors. So we would like to take this opportunity to thank Jobio, Smith & Williamson, and also Oracle NetSuite. So Big thank you so much, thank guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. The real reason everyone's here, because it's not for you and me, Few drinks, the real reasons, reason. yeah. The two mystery entrepreneurs behind this curtain. We put out a few clues online. Yes, we did. Some horrible guesses. One or two guessed it right, right? That's so true. the first clue that I put out was our first guest went from butcher to multimillionaire. Any ideas? It's not horrible. <laughs> Oops. Any, Any, anyone else on this side of the curtain want to guess? <laughs> no? no? Okay. Our second clue, our second entrepreneur mm. behind this curtain is a social media celebrity yes. who's no stranger to a bit of controversy. Any so. guesses? James Kavanagh. No. Wrong. No. Wrong. Not James Kavanagh. <laughs> Any other guesses? <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan. Lohan. No, that's not an either. Maybe not, right. No, definitely not. <laughs> Can everyone please put their hands together for Mr. Pat Phelan and <laughs> Mr. Paul Stenson from the White Moose Cafe. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for shouting out while you were behind the curtain, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, Graham didn't get the memo that we had to wear something flowery. I'm usually the, f I'm usually the floral one, yeah. but uh, fashion moves on, I suppose. Has. Normally are. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We know you're both extremely busy. You flew all the way back from the States just to be on the show. That in, right? in the jet. Drove from car. <laughs> <laughs> Same sort of thing. Yeah. Same sort of Sorry. thing. Right, yeah. right, OK, so where we're going to start, right? Pat, I actually t had to turn the card sideways to fill in the amount of things that you are recognized for, right? So you started off, as we said, as a butcher, right? Then chef, then you open up a recruitment agency, then you open up an internet cafe, then you open up four, maybe five telecom companies. You also open up a company called Twitter Phone. You then open up a restaurant. You then open up <laughs> Trust Dev, which everyone knows you for, for selling as well. And now you've opened up Sisu, which Paul knows extremely well. <laughs> we'll get that later. Also, Paul, right, you're known for onlinegrinds.ie, was one of your first ventures. You're also known for White Moose Cafe. I think we've got a yeah, few. White Moose Cafe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot the celebrity. Spot celebrity. You're also extremely well known for Snapchat. Also, you're extremely well known for your outrage marketing that you've done as well, right? A little bit of outrage there, right? But Pat, we're going to start off with you, right? Because Every time you do a blog or an interview or whatever it might be, everyone all starts off with the whole butcher thing, right? So we wanted to ask you, was the butcher idea yours? Was it your parents? Because you, you were pulled out of school? Was it your idea? Um, I suppose at the time it was 1981. Didn't want you know, to mention there ages. A, but. <laughs> <laughs> there was, a, you know, there was, there was nothing in Ireland. Yeah. You either got a trade or you went to college and... You know, we were, we were kind of poor, so you got a trade. And uh, lucky to get a trade at the time with some friend yeah. of my dad's, and you were shoved in there. And, you know, I remember the day I got my uh, junior search results, was inter at the time, you know, cycling from the English market yeah. to get my results. Really? <laughs> Great results, and I had to cycle back to work, you know. And I have two kids, and if you were thinking that they were working at 15, you'd be thinking, it's kind of crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a long time ago, and... You know, I don't think it done me any harm, you know. Did, did you, were you open to the idea at the time? I can't even remember, to be honest. Yeah. You know, I, 
I, I suppose I, I didn't like school too much and I was out of school and becoming a man or whatever. Was it the case that your friends stayed on in school and then you went off to do it? Or was yeah, it loads stayed on and I went off and just went off on a different path, you know. Yeah. Got a job and met a girl and that was kind of it. The rest is history. Paul, you went into early days, went into hotel management in, in college. Same kind of thing as Pat, was that, was that your idea, you wanted to do that or? Absolutely not, no, uh, probably the biggest mistake of my life, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I went for, for the hotels or for you? For both, but I, I, I went for the path of security because my parents owned the, the, the charitable yeah, lodge, yeah. Uh, rather than I guess following my dream, which, uh, which I should have done, um, but I guess now what's happening is, I suppose the social media, Snapchat in particular, Instagram nowadays as well, is, is my dream following me because I'm yeah. kind of allowed to perform, mm. act the gobshite and entertain, which is what, there's, there's two purposes of what, what I do on social media. The first is to entertain first and foremost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and secondly to make a few bob for, for the family business. How long were you in hotels for, before that? Uh, I spent, so I, I went to hotel management school in Shannon, I did a year in Switzerland yeah. uh, as my second year placement and then I came back, worked in the Marion Hotel here in Dublin for two and a half years, got fired from it. Uh, for what? Go on. Well, I came in drunk on duty at half five in the morning and I just thought I had enough. Uh, the Americans, I was serving breakfast to Americans. Sorry to the Americans in the audience. So I, <laughs> It's already started, the controversy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there were these fucking wrecked the head American guests there that morning and nothing was right for them. The coffee was, was too cold and, 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 and the, the breakfast buffet wasn't hot enough and I just thought at one point, because there was still loads of drink in my system, I said, fuck okay, this, I'm going. So I threw my pager on the desk, took off my uniform, put on my, my civvies and headed down to uh, Grafton Street, had my own breakfast and beauties, then got on the 46A bus, went out to RTE looking for a job as TV presenter. I was still drunk. In the same, all in the same day. Still drunk, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was 7 a.m. Uh, HR weren't <laughs> in until 9, so I spent two hours in the, in the canteen there. Yeah. And uh, then I met the head of TV programs. He said, I'll give you five minutes. Uh, and I met him, and 45 minutes later, he said, uh, send us in a video of, of you doing what you do best, whether it's current affairs or comedy or whatever it is. And uh, I said, right, Grant. Got back in the 46A bus, sobered up, realised... What the fuck am I doing? Never sent in the video, and yeah, so 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 that's what happened. There. You mentioned the, the the alcohol thing there, Pat. That's something that you, you two have in common is the the battle with with alcoholism. And can you talk us through a, a typical day? Or how long were you an alcoholic for? Um, I still am. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hence the uh, the beers on this side. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's no magic pill or anything, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm 18 years sober. Um, Congratulations. Woo! Amazing. I'm kind of, uh, I'm sober longer than I was drinking, but uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's an Irish thing, you know, just caught up yeah. and drinking yeah. as a young fella like everybody else and got too fond of it and fucked up a family and, mm. you know, it's, uh, I was probably drinking 15, 16 years, probably 10 of those alcoholically. And, you know, I suppose the amazing thing about it is, you know, I was a chef and I was a butcher and, you know, that that was as high as I thought I'd ever be. Mm. I stopped drinking in 2000, I opened a business in 2001. Yeah, yeah. I sold the last business for 60 odd million yeah. 18, 18 or 24 months ago, you know? So yeah. the minute I stopped, it was like, like yeah. Paul said, you know, you never sent in the video. Wow. I could have never sent in the video. On, in, in the later stages of, of alcoholism, right? Just before you, you decide to go sober, can, we've read a few articles about it, I'm sure some people know about it. Can you talk us through a typical day? Because we haven't heard what that was like for you back then. So the, a typical end to the day was, you know, I, I was talking to someone about this the other day, I was trying to get sober, and uh, my end of day, I was, I was the head chef in a restaurant called Taste of Thailand. Uh, I'd have no money, so I'd be drinking whatever dregs of drink I could get my hands on. And the end of the night, I'd pick up my tips, so I might make a few quid out of tips, and I'd uh, I couldn't drive at this stage because I was just too nervous driving and I, and I knew I'd be drinking. So, yeah, yeah. And I'd go across the way to this off license at the bottom of Patrick's Hill. It's still there. And I'd get uh, two naggins of vodka, two bottles of Diet Coke. Okay. I'd go across the way into the bathroom in the restaurant, empty out half out of each bottle, yeah. put in the nag into each one, drink half a bottle of vodka on the bus home and hope that I wouldn't get off the bus at a pub. That was every night. 
Every yeah. single night. Every single night. And then it was some nights that mightn't be enough and I have to go again. Yeah. And you know, it was just a cycle. And you know, you actually hate yourself. You don't want to do it. Yeah. There's nobody enjoys being an alcoholic. There's yeah. nobody who wants to drink. It's an illness. Yeah, yeah of course. Or it's a disease and it just caught up with me. And you know, at the end I got, you know, people wouldn't recognize me now, but you know, at the end I got very, very sick. In what way? And mental trouble. Loneliness, constant fears. I remember, I don't know if I've told this publicly, but I remember my last drink, I woke up at home and it was snowing in the house. While you were, when you woke up, yeah, so were you- Completely you snowing in the house. Right. And I could see it and I could feel it and I could walk on it yeah. and I could hear the noise and my brain is telling me it's not. Mm. And I'm blinking, it wouldn't go in, you know, at the hospital that day. Yeah. And that was kind of the end of the road. Paul, you're, you're also an alcoholic. Um, when did your problem start, right? At what age? What was a typical day like for you? Well, I spent my days in Shannon College of Hotel Management perpetually drunk. Um, and uh, I suppose there's this period of 15 years there where it was just a haze, you know, and uh, I, it all ended, I'm only sober two years on Monday, but... Um, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, but um, it actually, so the, the cafe is actually three on Monday as well. So it was on the first year anniversary, uh, went out on the absolute lash with, with Jason and we ended up in a club called Bukaki. And I got so out of it. <laughs> laughing in the background there. That, uh, I, I, no taxi would take me home. I had to be brought back in a rick rickshaw. And uh, we live quite near to the hotel and we had to go into the hotel to get my keys to go to the house, two yeah. minutes walk away. And uh, Jason couldn't get me up the steps, so I sat on the bench and an American female guest came out was having a cigarette. I fell on the ground. She had to help me up. So if you just think of it, the general manager of the hotel is being helped up by a guest. Um, and then she ended up bringing me home with Jason uh, to the door, not coming into the house. But uh, the next day I went on my, my phone where I have the CCTV of, of, of the cafe and the hotel. And I was able to see how I got. And uh, I haven't had a drink since. Um, so I suppose if you can visualize, if, if there's some way of you actually seeing how bad you are, uh, that's the, the, route, the route to recovery. Pat, your wife has said that when you put down the drink, your drive to succeed and solve problems is frightening. You said you, you stopped drinking in 2000, was it? And 2001 launched your, your, your first business. Do you have an addictive personality and you just happen to be addicted to success now or addicted to, to work? I, I, I think the drive was that the first driver was we had nothing. You know what I mean? You imagine having no money for 15 years and you're going, we've never been on holidays. We have two kids. You've never done nothing for them. You know, so the drive was to try, I suppose the first four or five years was trying to repair damage. And, you know, I remember buying stuff and buying stuff and buying stuff and buying stuff and presents and presents and presents, you know. And someone yeah. said to me in the end, you know, relax, it'll come, it'll come, it'll come. And, you know, it was like, you know, when I look now, and, 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 and you know, I, I, I'm very unboastful, yeah. but you know, my two boys have no mortgages, they have their own houses, and that, that's been like, that's thanks to AA, because like, there's, there's yeah. nothing else could have done that. I can't, I, 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 I can't stop, I'm addicted. Yeah. I can't stop anything on my own. So I, I tried, I mean, I, I was going to AA for two years before I stopped drinking. Two years before you yeah, stopped. Yeah, a day, a week, a half a day, that night, yeah, yeah. a month. You know, I was always trying, you know, to, to try get back with something, mm. to try fix something, to try get back home, to try fix a relationship, to try fix my parents. So I was trying to fix something in the end. Yeah. Oh, I had to be fixed. Well, well, this is where we you know. I, I mentioned exactly what companies you got involved in, right? And you can understand where you might have gone from, say, butcher. To, to chef, right, because they might relate a little bit. But how did you go from chef to recruitment agency? It's problem solving, we couldn't find chefs. I was working every <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. 
there's the answer. <laughs> It's always been problems. So if, you, so if you look at what I've done, which is like, sounds dramatic, but it isn't. We couldn't find chefs, yeah. we couldn't find waiters, we couldn't find people for washing up. You, met, you met a businessman, though. Yeah, so I, met a guy, I met a guy called Patrick in Malaysia. Yeah. And we started a recruitment agency, and we chefed most of the restaurants in Ireland. Then the guys came here, and they couldn't phone home. They couldn't, there was no internet cafes, so I started yeah. internet cafes. Then they wanted to make calls from at home and out of hours. I started a phone card company. Then I was traveling all the time. I built Cubic Telecom out in Sandyford. So I was the founder of Cubic. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had a load of fraud. I started a fraud company called Trusta. Yeah, the rest is kind of history with that as well. Then I love Botox. We were going to say, like, when it came on. No, that was the, that was the one where I went. Uh. <laughs> but you both look great. Paul included, yeah. you know, because um, Paul sn snuck into one of your, um, your Botox clinics there. When was it? On, on, on Tuesday? Oh. Yesterday morning. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> he looks that good naturally. I know. Botox doesn't work for five days, so he's looking good naturally. Paul, I, I sat down last week to read a, a very short blog post about a company called OnlineGrinds.ie to find out it wasn't a very short blog post and it was very, very long. Did you read it all? Nearly. I didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah. That was too long. I loved it, but I didn't have a month. Yeah. So can you tell us about online grinds out of you? First of all, how you, how you got into it? God, I didn't know you were asking questions about this. Uh, uh, online grinds out of you, yeah. Well, I, I, I did French grinds. I taught one-to-one -one French grinds in my house. And uh, like, uh, I know that back then, uh, this was 2012, um, the like some teachers would charge up to eighty euro an hour for a, for a one to one grind. And yeah. If you go into the to any of these grind schools, you're 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 paying top dollar as well to to sit in a class with with fifty fifty other students. So I said, right, there needs to be some way to democratize the grinds industry. So I started an online grind study where we would charge ten euro per hour per 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 person and Johnny would go up to the bedroom and put on the, 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 the open up the laptop and learn French or Irish or maths or whatever it was. But I just think entering that space in 2012 was a little bit premature mm -hmm. because uh, mummy and daddy are not, aren't going to be happy to, to let Johnny go up to the bedroom and go online because you don't know what sites they're going to be on. Uh, they much prefer handing the ch child over to another human because there's an element of control. Yeah, of course, yeah. So uh, it, it, it didn't work. Um, it, I raised 80 grand for it. Um, and to be honest with you, the two people I took on, uh, the CTO and the investor, uh, they ended up kicking me out of the com company. How did, how did that end up happening? Because I saw that online grinds was not working, so I said, we have to go back to a bricks and mortar uh, element and have a live online grind element to it. So it'll be an actual physical classroom where we'll, we'll get people in at a higher price point. Um, but they said, no, no, we have to stick with online grinds. And I said, well, look, if you're not going to come with me on the journey, I'm setting up another company called Learnology myself. Yeah. And then they tried to sue me, saying that it was in direct competition with online grinds, that I, even though it was physical grinds as opposed to online, and they ended up out, uh, booting me out of the comp company. And it went on for another six months or so, and then they ended up going bust, so. How did you get funding for that company at the time? HBAN. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a private investor. Yeah. We, we initially thought it was someone else. We thought it was Sean, one of the, the Dragon's Den guys that invest in, but it wasn't. It is, it is a guy called Sean, but he was. But it wasn't that Sean. Is that how you, because we said at the beginning, you two have actually spoke previous, but this is the yeah. first time you actually met in person. Was that something you were chatting to Pat about in the beginning? I would have been back yeah. in those days, yeah. What advice did you give him back in? It was 2012, was it? 2012. Yeah. What advice did you give? Stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> straight to straight to the point. No, it's uh, you know, Paul's a superstar in his own right. You know, I'm sure he's going yeah. to build lots of other businesses, and you know, it's and the same advice I give anybody. You know, sell something. Yeah. I, I find with startups lately, the last few years, all I'm seeing is burn, 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 and you know, very, uh, you know, the sale is neglected. Yeah. You know, tons in marketing and very little in selling. Uh, trust, trust Ev, right? Uh, so you started Trust Ev. It was actually a first employee of a previous company who brought you the idea of Trust Ev. Yeah, right? me and Chris Kennedy worked together, and uh, Chris was my uh, head of tech at Cubic. And Chris had this idea, and uh, 
we, we had two ideas. Uh, he had one and I had the other one. Uh, I can't remember what my one was now. Obviously his was better. So long ago. His one worked and uh, we built a company and, you know, we were bought really quickly, very early in the... Two years. Two years. Yeah. And uh, I remember being bought by TransUnion, who I'm now on the advisory board of. I don't work for them, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of out of that business now, but I'm on their advisory board. And uh, we were their kind of first large acquisition. And uh, last week or last month, they bought a company in the UK for 1.6 billion. Wow. So, you know, it, it's gone from uh, probably being the third credit bureau in the US to being the number two challenger brand now. Yeah. But new CEO, Jim Peck, hugely successful, the number one or two uh, credit bureau in 29 countries. Yeah. So I spent two years in a, in a plane. I was, I was going to say, because you were the biggest seed round in, in 2013, wasn't it? You know, where you raised three million, three million dollars. Yeah. You know, that was unheard of back in, in 2013. I was actually, you know, it was probably a bit kind of like, you know, security seed rounds are very, are, are very hot at the moment. I, th I think what's happening as well is, uh, you know, seed at the moment is easy to get as well. Yeah. So what you've now seen is that what used to be known as seed is, or what used to be known as A round is actually yeah. now seed. The seed rounds are much larger because people have had a lot of exits and they're tending to invest bigger. Yeah. I just want to go back, back when you actually set up Twitter phone, yeah. right? Because you set up a company in 2008, Twitter only opened up in, in 2006. Yeah. You opened up a company called Twitter phone yeah. in 2008. Yeah. Just explain to us exactly what Twitter phone was. And how did you get the name? So it's very early on Twitter, yeah. very early, I don't know. I'm there a long time, 10 or 12 years or something. Um, there was like three of us in Ireland <laughs> and uh, it was really early and I, I became friendly with Jack, uh, the founder, and I had this idea that you, that typing was a pain in the ass, you know, because there's yep. all Nokia's and all this, 3100's, uh, that, but you should be able to talk to Twitter. Of course, yeah. So we built this thing myself and this uh, guy, David Marcus, who became, uh, he's now the head of Messenger at Facebook. Okay, all right. <laughs> Who's a buddy, and uh, we built this thing that you could ring a number and you could talk, and the machine would translate it. We're using a guy down the road here called Sean O'Sullivan. Yeah. And uh, his company translated it, and we talked to Twitter. But it was all, for, so then what we done is I found this gap in telecoms where uh, there's this thing called, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, but it, you, you can run it through different countries where there's a higher premium number. Yeah. So we got paid for every call and because the translation had to be done in real time. And my friend Mike Arrington ran TechCrunch at the time. Yeah. And they gave us a load of coverage and it, it went mad, but we we're losing, like it's a great business. We we're losing money on every call. Yeah. <laughs> so, so look, that was a really good business, right? You were losing money on every call. But since selling uh, Trust Ave, right? How has your day-to-day -day life changed? Uh, pretty interesting. I, I, I don't, too, I've been living in New York for the last uh, five and a half years. I'm home, I came home six months ago and uh, I started a fund every fellow who sells his company does and then closed the fund because of the pain in the ass. That and was the interesting thing. Uh, it, was, it was for Irish companies. It was for Irish it? companies that want to scale globally. Okay, and we right. just couldn't find enough early stage to want to scale globally. And uh, I'd been helping the, and advising the lads in Sisu, uh, which was then called something else, yeah, yeah. for the last three or four years. And uh, I thought that might scale, so we raised some money. I'm now the CEO, running it full time. And... Uh, you know, I, at the time, I, when, when Trusted finished, I was 17 and a half stone, wrecked, yeah. beat up from, so I, I started going to the gym and, and kind of lost a lot 180 of kind of thing. And, you know, because I thought if we're, if we're going to open a beauty business and I'm going to be the CEO, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no good be yeah, yeah, a 50 well inch belly, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's fun, it's fun, very different. You, you had mentioned that you were on Twitter from quite an early, an early start, right? And I'm sure a lot of people here know who Gary V is. I'm sure you do, yeah. You're, you're a big fan of Gary V? Uh, no. Maybe not, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You were. I was very friendly with Gary back in the day, you know? Okay. And uh, my claim to fame is I'm the only cork man who hasn't paid money to meet him. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. But we, we, we obviously follow you on Twitter, you follow us, and that's where we originally met online, right? Sounds like a dating site. Yeah, but, not like that. 
we saw a couple of tweets that you had given out about lately, yeah. about Gary selling his runners. Yeah. You know, because he went from giving out a lot of advice and everyone taking advice from him, and now he's just pushing his runners. Yeah. And you weren't able to get your hands on a pair of runners, and you were quite upset about it. So we're, so, <laughs> so, so we're going to take anyway, right? So I know you've been eyeing up this yeah. bag seeing you looking at that it. we have here from, pe yeah. from, from pennies. <laughs> yeah. Right? So what myself and Graham thought we would do is we would chip in yeah. and buy a pair a, a of, pair of runners. runners. Right? Yeah. Now, we still have the price tag on it. So as you can see, these beauties cost 13 euro. Yeah. They're, they're, these beauties not, cost 20 something. So. They're, they're not, not Gary V's. Right, these are pennies, and they are both signed by Mark and Graham from the startup van. Yeah. So, Better than Gary we, yeah, Vee's. we just thought, there you go. Thanks just, just because, uh, <laughs> and we expect you to wear them when you're training every day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Behind the couch. Behind the couch. I'll, try, I'll wear them tomorrow training anyway. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Paul. Yes. The controversies, right? The modern age of you wrecking everyone's head or most people's heads in Ireland, and you were quite worried about coming on saying that someone in the audience more than likely doesn't like you. Excited, not worried. Excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of friends that even just said that. It's actually very underwhelming. Like nobody has walked out. No one has thrown anything. Which, which, is, which, which tells me that what I'm doing is not working. Because what, what we do is we polarize our audience. And it's, it's the people who give out about us who are our best sales reps, not the people who like us. Um, because obviously bad news is, yeah. it travels faster than good news. But uh, no, I'm not, I, I wouldn't, controversy is a word that people use, but it's more honesty. Um, I suppose in this day and age, in this cripplingly PC climate, yeah. uh, you can't say fucking anything anymore. And so when you're honest about one thing or another, people see it as controversy, mm. uh, which is good in one sense. Uh, well, it's great for us because it, it gets our name out to a global audience. Yeah. Yeah. So we use offense takers as the vehicle by which the White Moose Cafe has become a worldwide brand. Yeah. Um, when, when did you start that, I meant to say? When did you start White Moose Cafe? Uh, July the 31st, 2015. So you, you were suffering quite badly from, from drink at the time when you set it up, right? Was that where the controversies came from? No. The, actually, the, the Snapchat and everything started after I gave up drink. Really? Oh, okay. Because we're, we're used to your antics now, right? Uh, but in the beginning, Mark and I'd say, he must be locked. Why are putting to him that? But that wasn't it at all. I'm just mad. But, like, <laughs> the, the, the drink may be completely mad, like, but, uh, uh, no, um, but, like... Well, what, what, was the, what was the first thing you did? Was it the, was it the shoot vegans or was it the... We might, sorry, we might as well explain exactly what the shooting vegans thing was. <laughs> yeah, it's very out of context, shooting yeah. vegans. Uh, well, okay, so that was World War V. Um, V for vegan and V for viral as well. But uh, no, what happened one day was a couple came in and uh, they were a German couple. And I'm saying they were a German couple because they were actually German. So, so we're giving out about the Americans and now the Germans. No, but like, but you, see, but right. you see, people give out. Why do, you, why do you feel the need to say they're German? Because they were German. <laughs> but uh, so the, the man was there and he had his full Irish. And then the girl kind of looked up at me. I, this was back in the days when I actually did some work because we were only open a month or two. Yeah. And uh, I uh, was taking the order and she looked up. What about me? I am vegan. What are you for me? And That's said, a good German accent. Yeah, perfect. It's not because I can't do German. And I said, but look, we can do a vegetarian breakfast. Is that all? Uh, well, yeah, may I give us a bit of advance warning if you're coming in. So I put yeah. up a post on the Facebook page saying, attention vegans, please do not waltz into the, to the cafe and look at us as if we've 10 heads because we don't have 50,000 items on our menu to suit your idiosyncratic dietary requirements. Remember that word? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I already forgot it. One particular vegan uh, <laughs> misunderstood that word, thought it meant idiotic went and plastered all, every single vegan social networking platform in the world. There's a lot of them which now. Which resulted in about 29,000 one-star reviews, a, a barrage of hate, a torrent of abuse, and I said, right, all vegans are barred. Most people now at this point, <laughs> see, most people at this point would say, what the fuck would I do? Oh my God, I'll delete the post, delete the post. No, I, I barred vegans. And then I said, any, any it's vegans... It's like a Basel Fawlty thing here, though. No, 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 it's not Basel <laughs> Uh, I said any vegans coming in, uh, attempting to come in, will be shot dead at point blank range. <laughs> no, obviously I wasn't being serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although we do have an AK uh, behind the coffee dock. Uh, 
But uh, so yeah. Have you ever used it, by the way? Uh, we've used it as a prop in Instagram photos and stuff, oh but, right. uh, but but never actually on somebody yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so is that's where, that's where that came from. Yeah. You are a master when it comes to adding fuel to the fire, right? Because. As we know, this was getting a lot of attention online, and it was kind of dying off a little bit, and then you started it up again. You know, so what did you do there? Uh, back at the, this is the vegan wars, isn't Yeah, it? still the vegan thing, yeah. There's a, look, there's a couple of wars we're gonna bring up, but just the fact of the vegan wars. Oh God, there's so many of them, I can't yeah. really remember the exact ins and outs of it. Yeah. What happened after that? You, you were just, you, it was dying off a little bit, and then even things like uh, when you made your, your coffee cups, all right, so you've got your cups. Oh, yeah, the ashes of vegans. Is that what yes. you're talking about? Okay, yeah, okay. So we have a part on the coffee doc saying ashes of vegans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beside the tears of bloggers. Yeah. Uh, but you've also got your coffee cups that are made out of tears from vegans. Well, unfortunately not. We tried to get them made from vegan tears, uh, okay. but, but that didn't work out. So they're made from compostable, fully sustainable, tree-free cups. And uh, which, which is very good for the environment and uh, it's yeah. important that... And vegans. Well, no, vegans aren't good for vegans. Uh, absolutely not. But there was the blogger, the whole blogger gate scenario, right? Uh, like, we noticed that obviously it went, it went just so viral, right? And yeah. we always chat about when, when businesses, we've got caught out by Dublin cyclists for a tweet and blah, blah, blah. But it was early stages and we panicked and deleted it because we were getting yeah. harassed, right? And maybe we shouldn't have. But you just constantly, with the blogger gate, can you explain what, what that was about originally? I think we probably all know what blogger gate was. Do we, do we all know? Have, who here has heard about the White Moose Cafe blogger gate? Yeah, a few. Okay, okay. okay. So, 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 so quite a number of us. Uh, uh, so I wish you know that girl. I haven't a clue. <laughs> I haven't a notion, but uh, she, she's well known. Uh, that's one thing. So a girl, basically, an Instagram influencer, uh, contacted us and say, said, look, I have 87,000 subs on Instagram, uh, so and so, so whatever number on, on YouTube. Uh, can I have five nights free over the St. Valentine's weekend? And I said no. But I, 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 it, I, I basically wrote a very long uh, post explaining why I said no, and it got huge media attention, and it was a worldwide story. Yeah. Uh, that was our biggest event. But, th but this is where we were talking about adding fuel to the fire, right? Because she got a lot of attention online, and then you sent her an invoice for all of the attention that you had created for her. I did, <laughs> for, for 5.9 million. But <laughs> no, 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 I mean, did you get paid? No, but, but, but the important thing I have to say here is I have never once mentioned that girl's name. And in my response to her, I did black out her name. Yeah. But then somebody found that if you heighten the brightness on the phone and increase the like, zoom in, you can actually see her name. Okay. She then went on to her YouTube channel and posted a 17-minute video basically crying about how I targeted her and all this. She basically outed herself. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Um, which was great. Uh, so I, 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 I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, it was actually a good thing that her, her name was, was visible, although I did not do that on purpose. And that's very important to say that. Um, but then, yeah, she got so much, like, I think her reach was 2.1 billion. Worth of media or, or, or No, what? the number of eyes on, on yeah, that story. Yeah. Uh, ours was 800 billion, which wasn't as good, I suppose. I was a bit annoyed about that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it was <laughs> like, I, I, it came from messing, yeah. Yeah. just a bit of divilment, a bit of, you know, the Irish kind of just, yeah. you know. Now, Jason was beside me when, when, the, when the email came in, and she, he said, I just ignore it. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> So, opportunity uh, knocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so look, like, obviously, y y this is so much crack to you, and it's resulting in, because there's entrepreneurs all in the audience, it's resulting in actual tangible business, right? And it's good business. What do your parents think of it? But even in the early stages, were they like, what the hell are you doing at Snapchat, stop that, or was it they were on board from the beginning? Or damaging the hotel, did they think that at all? As long as they see the money coming in, I think they're kind of happy with okay. whatever I do. You know, they kind of turn a blind eye to the exact you know, ins and outs of what I, what I post. Yeah. But uh, like, mum will not be on Snapchat. Uh, as some of you probably know, uh, Dad is completely like he, he doesn't know what Snapchat is. Yeah. In fact, my mum calls Snapchat Snapshot. Uh, <laughs> On so the wall. yeah, but like yeah, they they don't mind. They don't mind. They don't mind. Okay, all right. We know we've got a couple of outrageous things that we think you've done, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience, people watching, know what you've done, right? What do you think 
is the most outrageous thing that you've ever done on Snapchat? I got arrested once. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about it? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I, had a I have a friend who's a guard who came in and uh, she was having her, her lunch or whatever and I said, have you the, the car with you outside? She was in her, her vest. She said, yeah. Have you cuffs on you? Yeah. What can we do with this now? So I staged uh, an arrest. <laughs> And I think we grew about 15,000 followers overnight from that one, one thing. Yes, but because, as we mentioned, you both look great, you know. Paul, we met you last week, so we can see the difference. 20 years uh, younger. You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pat, we hadn't met you before. You look great, you know. We can only go on, on photos. Tell us a little bit about Sisu. Sisu's quite interesting. People are, people are spending more on themselves. Yeah. Um, people want to look younger and fresher um, in their 40s and in their 50s and they spend a lot more money on themselves and I'd seen this I was friends with James and Brian and uh, their doctors um, and I'd seen this in the US yeah and I started looking at things like Soul Cycle and Barry's Boot Camp and Orange Theory everyone going protein everyone going protein that. and uh, you know in the states you know th these type of treatments in the states are every day yeah every day you go in and you get a treatment it's done and the guys had a, a small clinic, and I'd been helping them get started and scaling it because doctors are actually, surprisingly enough, have no business ideas. Are, you know, they have no knowledge of business. They've spent so long, it takes, it's so, the training process is so long, they're yeah. actually immersed in it, and it's their world. And I'd been helping them. I came home, uh, and I thought, this thing could actually scale. Yeah. And, and, and in reality, it's kind of, it's a model that's a bit like software as a service. So, you know, I know how to acquire customers online. I know how to acquire them through social. Yeah. Uh, it's a repeatable process. And, and, and it's really nice because, you know, we were talking about business earlier. People come out happy. You know, if anybody wants to have a look at the well, That's how we think. <laughs> you know, no, like, but if you look at if you look at C they're so happy. Look at the CSU account on Facebook, and you know we we have videos of real people, yeah. and they're just people that said, "Hey, yeah, you can film us. It's no problem." And there's a, a lady tonight, Helen. You know, and she just she just says, I, "I was tired of being tired. I was tired of looking tired." Yeah. And she just got some Botox. Is that really? You know, it's a treatment. It's three hundred quid. Is it difficult in Ireland to break that stereotype? Because there are people Absolutely saying, oh, God. not. It's changing dramatically. It's really? changing dramatically. Um, we're really, we, you know, we have four stores now. We have five stores, probably six stores this year in Ireland. We'll move on to New York really quickly. Um, but but, but it, it was something that was really neglected because it was done in beauty salons by a dentist, you know, pop up there, love, and I'll take a look at your Botox. No explanation. No follow-ups, and, and we've yeah. looked at it completely different. We're only doctors. Mm. You come in, you get a treatment. You come back in two weeks after your treatment. If you need more, you will get it free of charge. Yeah. It's, it, it's where you're not a customer, but a patient. Mm. And we've, we, we've changed that model dramatically, and, and I, 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 think it's, I, I think it's going to be a, a very, very big business. Is it, is it odd for, because for, you're you know, Pat Fino from Trustev, you know, tech entrepreneur. Is it weird that you're tech mates and you're now doing Botox with people? Is that do they answer the phone? I'm doing it all on them. Oh, really? Listen, it's very unusual because I can see people kind of going, oh, but that's really weird. And then I think, you know, I was a butcher, a chef, yeah. recruitment agency, Cubic Telecom, Trust of, you know, it's not really weird at all. Like, every time I've changed verticals yeah, yeah, of course. and challenged myself. And I'm with two guys that I absolutely love. The drug that's in Botox was $9 billion last year. So it's, uh, and that's yeah. like that much people. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Get on, right? So yeah. vegans tend to dislike you, Paul. Pat, you started life as a butcher. So we have a game, right? We do. I'm going to grab the game. We came up with an imaginative name called, Is That Meat In My Mouth? <laughs> Which, there was a few options and somehow we landed on that one, all right? So we have some vegan, Possibly not vegan food. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> is there is there anything you're allergic to before we start? Absolutely not. Right. Hot. No. Right. No. Okay. 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 Carbohydrates. <laughs> Carbohydrates. Right. Okay. So there's three options here, right? And then we're going to get you to taste them. When you say that is vegan or that is meat, 
Right? Who wants who wants to go who wants to go first? You don't have a vegan chicken burger there, I hope. I've never understood that. Like you know, a <laughs> vegan maybe it chicken burger. vegan chicken burger. Yeah, okay. Well, we're gonna start with this section. Okay. Right. Sorry, actually we want to bring someone up from the audience. Will we? we? Yeah. Will we? Bring a vegan up. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to come up? They're not all vegan. So <laughs> whoever, whoever can eat. Well, come on up. Whoever wants to come up. Come on up. Come on up. Someone. We need one. By the way, one. I don't yeah, hate yeah. vegans at all. Honestly, I don't. Come on up. Come on up. Big round of applause. And we got a mic as well. We got a mic up here for you. Jesus, he's no vegan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's working, man. Sit down. Just want to sit beside me here. Okay. Okay. We'll get to the middle. We'll get to the middle. Yeah. So, what's your name? We should have my name. Ben. Ben. Until ben. later. Ben, how are you? Welcome to the show. Right. You're not, you're not okay. vegan, Ben, are you? I know. We'll start, we'll start with you, Pat, all right? We'll start over here with what looks like a hot dog or may, may be an actual hot dog. If you want to take a quick bite and let us know, is that vegan? Is that meat in your mouth? <laughs> What's the verdict? Um, it's vegan. It's vegan? Ben? Finish your own. <laughs> if you want, sure. sure. Meat? Meat. Meat? Okay. Vegan sure meat? That's the same one as Pat. Yeah. 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 They share. The, the expert. expert. Will someone be shot on site? Definitely vegan. Definitely, Definitely vegan. vegan. Okay, all right, what's the answer? No, no, all of these are meat, aren't they? You're tricking us. <laughs> You're tricking us. That's vegan. Definitely vegan. Vegan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Option number two. It's like it's an option. It's yeah. <laughs> chicken. Sorry, yeah, the chicken. Or is it? Come on, you're a butcher now and a chef. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, and you opened up a restaurant. That's vegan. That's vegan. That's is vegan. It? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nearly gagged when you said that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, whichever you want. Play it safe. Straight in. You could be surprised here. I'm so hungry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna meet again. Meat? Okay, okay. <laughs> alright, yeah. What, what is it supposed to be? Is it it's, it's, it's chicken. Oh wait, if it's chicken, it's not meat then. That's chicken. Oh, well, it, you tell us. I'll stick with it, stick with it. Oh, that's 100% vegan. 100% vegan? Okay, alright, what is that? That's chicken. Is it? That's really? Yeah. yeah. Don't ask us. That is chicken, folks. Don't ask us where we got it. Don't ask us where we got it. Right, final one. Let me just move that half-eaten dog out of there. Jesus Christ, it's brown. Yeah. Mass production. Not chicken right. breast, anyway. This is a chicken burger, right? So meat or not meat? Don't be looking at it, and, you know. Vegan. Okay, okay. Well, that's just <laughs> no. that. <laughs> Everything to you is vegan. No. Yeah. I brace it, so it's very hard to taste. Okay. Oh. Okay. I took my retainers out. <laughs> Next. I took them out. These ones ain't coming out, trust me. All right. I can even pick it up. Yeah, it should be blindfolded, actually. Mm -hmm. We were thinking of that, but then we didn't think you'd trust us. <laughs> Delicious. Mm. I wouldn't go that far now. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul? F uh, meat or not meat? No, not meat. No. Not meat? Okay, so we've got vegan all the way. Vegan. Two, Two meat. meat, one vegan. I'd, I'd say it's vegan by looking at it, but... Taste it, Paul. Taste it. You could be pleasantly surprised. What's that supposed to be? Chicken burger. Oh, That's a vegan chicken burger, 100%. Is it? Yeah. It, it is, is a vegan, vegan chicken, chicken burger. burger. It is vegan. Use round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. 
you are more than welcome to finish those off. Yeah, Pat's, there you go. <laughs> We'd like to thank absolutely everyone for coming along, especially Pat, thank you so much for coming on the show. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. Guys, thank you so much thank for showing up. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we would also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors as well. So Jobio, thank you so much. Smith & Williamson, thank you so much. Also Oracle NetSuite, thank you so much yeah, as well. Make sure you tune in on social media for clues for episode five. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Thank guys. you so much for coming on the show. Thank you.